Hello, and welcome to Conversations with Dr. Stephen Greer. I'm Dr. Greer, and I'm the founder of the Disclosure Project and the Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence. And uh, also, we are doing a film known as Sirius. You can find out more about that at SiriusDisclosure.com. That's S-I-R-I-U-S, Disclosure.com. And uh, I'd like to thank the folks at the World Puja Network for hosting us here every two weeks to give you an update on our work and the exciting projects uh, that we're involved with, dealing with new energy, anti-gravity systems, uh, ET contact, and now, of course, this uh, full-length feature documentary film that is set for release this spring. So uh, I'm really excited about our guest today is Chris Cresatelli. He is a wonderful man who I met two years ago at Sundance Film Festival, and he is uh, someone who's done a lot of work in Hollywood with films and uh, hosting uh, special events and, and putting together the well-known 3D film festival that's in Los Angeles. And in fact, uh, it's uh, Chris who uh, introduced me to actor Thomas Jane, who is uh, now doing the voiceover for our film Sirius. So uh, Chris has done a great job networking for us and, and helping us with this project and is sort of one of the co-producers for the film uh, Sirius and is also going to help pull together the premiere that we're going to be holding in Los Angeles, the main big premiere for Hollywood. Uh, and uh, so I'm excited about having him on, on the call today uh, and uh, on the show and, and to kind of uh, introduce him to the audience and so that he can talk about how he got involved with all of this. So welcome to the show, Chris. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Yeah, so why don't you tell folks a little bit about how you got interested in the whole subject, uh, having been doing work in Hollywood for a couple of decades and and uh, how we sort of met a couple of years ago. Sure. Well, like most uh, creative people in Hollywood, when you find a project that interests you or a subject matter, you tend to do a little bit of research, and uh, as it turns out, I was working on a screenplay uh, that was uh, intended to be a, a movie about sort of a peaceful alien encounter, and in my research, I was fortunate enough to stumble upon the Disclosure Project and all the work that you've been doing, Dr. Greer. Uh, some of the eye-opening uh, instances probably that hit on the Richter scale for me, um, some of the work and discussions that you had with Paul Hellyer. Um, I believe he's a, a big conduit to reach people like myself in Hollywood and other places. Um, so <clears throat> having the, uh, the impetus to set up a program in Sundance was a really great idea. And thanks to you, we pulled off the first sort of mainstream corporate marketed uh, UFO event. And, um, I, you know, I was wondering how you felt about that program, having, you know, a different audience than the typical uh, convention and uh, UFO enthusiasts, you know, there you were talking to a lot of filmmakers and, you know, journalists and people who were there for the, the normal corporate mainstream marketing, and they got a dose of this very explosive, very interesting information. Yeah, well, it was fun. I mean, I, both this past year and two years ago, because um, so many of the people who are in Hollywood, and I met a number of well-known actors and producers and whatnot, and uh, they know the subject only through the garbage that, no offense uh, to you, Chris, of course, um, that, that Hollywood puts out on the subject, which is 99% uh, xenophobic, nasty, scary stuff. And when I started talking to people and started talking about the extent to which the Disclosure Project has, you know, over 500 top secret military witnesses and whistleblowers and that we've been doing briefings for, you know, the head of the Defense Intelligence Agency and the CIA director and members of Congress mm -hmm. for almost 20 years, yeah. uh, people were a little bit astonished. I mean, I think for most people that the subject is so much pigeonholed into the realm of the fantastic and the fantasy and the science fiction genre that they didn't really understand that underneath all of that or behind sort of it uh, hiding is a true story. And the true story is actually much more fascinating than any of the science fiction that's been created. And it was interesting sort of having that conversation with people in Hollywood because, you know, it's it's the land of fantasy. And, and when you start talking about the reality of the subject and, and, and then you sort of bridge over to, you know, why it's been held secret – uh, and uh, I know we were having a conference call yesterday with uh, our film team that's been involved with a marketing uh, group uh, there in, in, in Hollywood that has done a lot of the big films and worked on An Inconvenient Truth and The Hobbit and uh, Django Unchained and all these other films. And, and, and one of the things that the person couldn't understand, apparently, uh, was the connection between the E.T. subject 
and this whole environmental and energy issue. And um, it was kind of comical because on the call yesterday, and I know, Chris, you couldn't be on it, but, but I said, look, it's really simple. All you have to do is ask the question, here's a photograph of the craft. Here is a body we're working on that is quite obviously of extraterrestrial origin, but uh, we're still investigating it. And here's all these whistleblowers who have been involved with these projects up to and including retrieving downed ET vehicles that we've shot down and autopsying bodies and studying the propulsion and energy systems behind it. With all that evidence that we have and the thousands of pages of top secret documents and the hundreds and hundreds of hours of top secret testimony that we have on videotape, um, Someone needs to ask the question, how are they getting from there to here? And when you ask that question, that's the solution to the environmental and energy quest problem, but that's also the reason for the secrecy. So I said it's very easy from a marketing point of view, If you're, because this is a person who is a marketer. And I said what you have to do is say, these are real. How are they getting here? The answer, boom. It's a new world, new energy, yeah. new new civilization, no more oil, no more mountaintop removal of coal, no more uh, gas, coal, nuclear power, no more Fukushima's. I mean, this is really the truth behind the secrecy because it's, you know, a Goldman Sachs guy said, you know, you're talking about a $600 trillion piggy bank that people yeah. own in, in all these commodities and minerals and, and stuff that's destroying our planet, but it's, it's, it's the basis for a huge amount of wealth in the world. And I said, yeah, well, they're just going to have to get over it, you know, because we need a new world. Yeah, that is the call to action. In fact, um, in addition to all the, you know, wonderful things I learned about science and, um, you know, all of the forward movements in free energy, it was really that um, save the planet sort of mantra that, that captured my attention and was my call to action. You know, if there was a way to bring these technologies to light so that they could decrease the carbon emissions, like, hello, that's number one priority. <laughs> right. Uh, you know what I mean? So, right. um, yeah, so that, you know, coming from just a person in Hollywood going out to make a movie investigating this subject, that was really the thing that captured my attention and where I find my inner passion in doing the work with you and Arm and everyone else. Right, and I think the other part of it that I, I mention to people frequently is that uh, the other big part of what we're doing is uh, uh, an interplanetary ambassadors program. And of course, we just got back from Marco Island, Florida, a couple of days ago. In fact, I just got back here to Virginia uh, uh, two nights ago, and it was an amazing series of contact events that happened there that I'll get into in a, in a little bit, but. Uh, we had probably the best group we've ever had, the most coherent, wonderful group of people, and perfect weather. And we were out on this island on, on a state park by the Gulf of Mexico. And one of the things that uh, everyone came to realize over the course of this training program that lasts about a week, we're going to do another one in uh, Colorado up in the San Luis Valley where so many ET contact events have happened over the decades. Um, they're near Creston, Colorado. We're going to be doing that in June. Uh, of this year, but the people who are at this one that, that we just completed uh, came to realize that if you look around the world, and you know, I've done briefings for you know people at the, the UN Secretary General level, uh, the, the, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee Chairman, the uh, people who are in State Department positions here, people who are in senior government positions in Britain and France and other countries, and no one is doing anything about what I see as an unacknowledged crisis in diplomacy, and that is who's representing humanity to these civilizations. Because right now there's a clandestine cabal of sociopaths, and I think in some cases Dr. Strangelove-type psychopaths who have electromagnetic weapon systems, that all they want to do is track these ET craft and target them and shoot them down and kill them because that's their mindset. We don't know what it is. They're not we don't want them here, so we're going to just shoot them down and kill them. So there has to be a citizen's diplomacy effort. And I remember back during the Cold War, there was a group that I uh, had knowledge of and had a little involvement with called the Physicians um, for um, uh, Social Responsibility and another one uh, that was for doctors that were doing basically – uh, civilian citizen diplomacy between Americans and the Soviet Union during the really dark days of the Cold War. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, we really need a global initiative. And that's why 22 years ago I started a program to train people to make contact with these civilizations and to show another side of the human face. Instead of the warfaring, destructive side, 
have people who would approach this in a peaceful way to make peaceful contact and make a bridge from now into the future where humans could become part of an interplanetary uh, system, which is where we're headed. But that because, you know, what I was astounded to find in doing briefings for, you know, the Clinton administration from then till now with, with senior people all over the world is that no one is minding the store because this subject is so secret that most of the conventional politicians and foreign office people and, and State Department people really don't know much about it at all, and there's certainly no organized attempt to make contact. So that's why we call we started this Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind initiative or CE5 initiative where we train people to use various protocols, including really advanced concepts in the science of consciousness, which we love talking about on this show because this World Pusha Network. It's all about people who understand higher consciousness and, and the Vedas and, and the, uh, the whole concept of enlightenment, but that these are the concepts that we have to bring to uh, this interplanetary level of, of communication and contact. And the fact that um, one, most people don't know that the reason, uh, for example, the CIA director that I briefed became very interested in the head of Army Intelligence back in the 90s was that they found out that it was true that we had a group of people I was doing a weekend training for in Florida again. Uh, back in It was in the uh, March of 1992. And we just had a training group out on a beach, and we were teaching people to remote view deep space, make contact, and invite these uh, ETs in. And then pop, 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 four extraterrestrial vehicles just materialized in the sky. And um, we have it on videotape, although it was old high eight videotapes, not the greatest video in the world. But you can hear everyone talking about, oh, my God, they're right here. And when I, when I think when this went up the chain of command, they realized, my God, there's a group of civilians that have figured out the Rosetta Stone of contact and it works and they're making this happen in all these places and now we have literally thousands of people all over the world doing this where it's created this momentum for peaceful contact to pull humanity away from this precipice of interplanetary war which of course is, is what has been secretly the agenda because as Werner von Braun said they want to hoax that there's a threat out there so that you can grow the military industrial complex from a trillion dollars a year to five trillion dollars a year uh, eventually globally and I think that what we as, as enlightened citizens have to say is that no we're not going to go along with that nonsense we're going to do something else so between that issue and the energy and environmental issue it becomes a really key relevant matter and and I think these discussions that I've had with folks in Hollywood uh, for really about 15 years it was back in the 90s I started meeting with people like uh, Arnold Copelson and um, uh, a number of uh, other directors and producers about this issue but what we found was that no one was able to do a film on it that was based on a true story that had this storyline in it because whenever they started to, even when they thought they had, oh, I've got a $60 million fund I have complete discretionary control over, uh, or so I was told by one large uh, movie maker, and then you know they start moving down that path of development and they get a phone call. And then they're told that I get a phone call after that phone call that says, uh, Dr. Greer, they're not going to let us make this film. And I've had that happen probably half a dozen times with some of the biggest names in Hollywood beginning in 1997. So that's 16 years ago. And my experience, Chris, with the Hollywood situation is that um, – which is why we crowdfunded this, by the way, is that yep. the money, you know, it's so old, it, it sounds so cynical, but he who has the gold rules. And so the people who fund these projects, and remember, there's like $2 billion that have gone into negative, xenophobic, alien invasion movies in the last couple of years, everything from Battle Los Angeles to, you know, all this garbage. And they will fund those. They will not fund something that has a message of peace of enlightenment, of contact, exposing the cabal for what it is and exposing the secrecy for what it is that is basically keeping everyone in macroeconomic slavery while we destroy the biosphere so a handful of people can run a, a roughshod over the entire planet um, using uh, fossil fuels for their wealth and also for centralized economic control. So I think these are the issues that no one has been able to work into a film until now with this documentary. Yeah, well, that is the um, 
the great thing about Sirius, and you know, thank you to all the crowd funders out there who support the project and continue to do so. Um, in fact, crowd funders all over the world are doing such great work in medical entertainment, um, just 